what happens if you don't pass either the English or the civics portion of your naturalization test. I'm Eric Widman, I'm an immigration lawyer, and the US Congress has set out educational requirements for every aspiring naturalization applicant. You have to show that you're proficient in English and that you have a solid understanding of US history and our governmental system. And that's the civics portion of the test. So you are gonna be nervous going into this test because the stakes are high, and that's common for everybody, including native English speakers. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to prepare well, study hard for the civics test, and depending on your level of English proficiency, prepare for that and study as appropriate. But the good news is it's not a disaster, it's not sudden death if you fail one or both of the portions of the test because you will be given the opportunity for a re-examination interview 60 to 90 days later. So you have a second opportunity. You'll be much more familiar with the process and the system. Of course, ideally you'll pass the first time around, but it can actually soothe you psychologically to know you don't have to redo the entire N-400 process all over again if you don't pass the civics test or the English test. Also keep in mind that during the examination itself, compared to the green card process, the USCIS officer who's interviewing you is often not as aggressive or hostile and certainly not out to get you, for the most part, when administering these tests. Compared to the green card interview, it's often less adversarial. And in some cases, they might even be rooting for you. They're gonna be fair, they're gonna fairly administer the test to you, but there's often some positive momentum and positive vibes that you're getting from your officer that, that can be different. And so it's, it's not as hostile as you might be imagining or maybe have seen online. In addition, this re-examination interview, if you have to go to it, is gonna be 60 to 90 days, two to three months from the date where you're given the bad news that you didn't pass one or both of those tests. But at either your original interview or the second test, remember that a little bit of imperfection is okay. You only need six out of 10 correct on the civics part. You can make mistakes on some of the non-content words as they're known when you're writing a sentence out or reading a sentence. So absolute perfection is not required. Finally, there's actually a third opportunity, a third way that you might get relief after being told by your officer that you failed one or, or both of the portions of the test. And that is your ability to request a hearing by filing form N336 this hearing will follow the denial of your citizenship application because you failed the test. You can also file that request for hearing for other reasons too. But if you believe that you should have passed the civics test and that your answers were good enough and that your officer may have treated you unfairly, then it can make sense to request this hearing and you'll be given the chance to take that test again that you would fail, one or both of the portions of the test. However, if you're simply not prepared for the test at all, and you maybe need to take an English course, maybe you need to study hard, or maybe have your doctor investigate, if you have a serious medical disability, that would allow you to get a waiver or an exception to the test. Those are all things you could consider in addition to considering Form N336 request for a hearing. All these issues can be kind of complex. Let us know if you have any questions and definitely take care.